All right, guys. A lot of y'all been asking for this build, and honestly, I did plan to gatekeep it for longer, but y'all did give me the 1K subs, so thank you for that. So I finally decided to do a showcase on this build. Uh, I'm gonna show y'all all the talents, all the armor, HP kits, and monsters I got, and like the steps that y'all need to get this build properly, so that way y'all can like go boss raid for yourself and stuff like that. Cause this build is really fun. It's really brain dead too if you play it properly. All right, so starting off with the end stats, we have 25 strength. Got that for spine cutter. We got that for bulldozer as well. Then we have 40 fortitude. We got that for exoskeleton. 25 agility for the agility talents, risky moves, and also condition runner. Then we have 40 intelligence for overflowing dam. And it's funny because you guys thought I got near overload, but it really doesn't even need to be that big. This is big enough, and you bloodless like a lot from this. So I think near overload is just like a bit too much, but I mean it could definitely work. Then we also have 24 flame charm. You could upgrade this, like change the build up a little bit just to make your flame moves do more damage, but you honestly probably don't need that. You really only need 80 gil breath, so that way it can get really big. That's what makes the brainstorm it's huge with this. Then I also got 91 shadow caps just for like extra damage, M1s, shadow hero blade, and, like a huge shadow caps. Alright, so now let's move on to the pre-shrine talents. I'll probably have the stats like somewhere on the screen. But what you want to do before you shrine is, when you first step into trial, you want to get 40 flame charm, 50 flame charm for Ashlam, I forgot. Charm. Reason why is because you want to get all the talents for flame charm you can, like, let's say like Hell's Partisan if you want to get that and stuff like that. Then after after that, you want to get 50 gil breath. Make sure you get inhaled because that's what you need to get fan the flames and like, inhaling like your launchers and stuff like that you want to get that 50 gil breath then afterwards you want to get 30 strength there's no real good reason why i got 30 strength just like bulldozer and stuff like that but i needed something to put my stats into because honestly i didn't even expect this build to be so good i was kind of just making it as i was progressing but after you get 30 strength you want to go 11 fortitude just for like that extra level to like if you're missing any talents then divide out your stats one agility uh, for this build, I didn't even divide it into intelligence, but you can. I'm pretty sure it'll work out the same. Then also get one shadow cast. If you don't, then it's not going to divide properly. Then after that, you shrine and your build should look like this. Something like this. It'll be on the screen. Once you've shrined, you're going to want to rush fortitude to get exoskeleton, 40 fortitude. Then after that, you just want to get like 25 strength, 25 agility for those talents, and then condition runner. Then after, you want to rush 80 gale breath, so that way you can get all the like gale talents. And this build didn't get rolled without song, but you're going to probably want that if you want to use different mantras than I do. Then after that, you want to get 40 intelligence for overflowing dam, M1's extra damage. Then once all that is done, you can get 92 shadow cast. I accidentally put one into the flame charm, but you can just get 92 shadow cast. That'll work. Alright, I forgot to mention. As for my traits, you can definitely change this up. Keep 6 year edition so that way you can spam mantras and have like as much ether and tempo. You can I don't really know if song chant works. I saw a video saying like it didn't work very much, but you can take one proficiency out and put it into song chant, or you can put on to vitality if you really want. And for these, it's got Autodidact and Scrapper. You're probably going to want Autodidact because when you shrine, you're gonna, your shadow's going to be like really low and you won't have any monsters to level it up. So that way you can just like put some points into the shadow cast to get some monsters for it. And just got Squeamish, Obvious, and Vegetarian. The best flaws in my opinion. Alright, so for talents, you definitely want to get Overflowing Dam. Gale Trap is like really nice to have. And it's raining. One second. As I was saying, for talents, you definitely want to get Overflowing Dam, Gale Trap is nice to have, Condition Runner, so what, like, you can run around and heal. Um, Moving Fortress, maybe, honestly, you probably don't have to get that, but you definitely want to get Dark Rift, it's like Ghost, it's better in my opinion, Spine Cutter if you like to, like, dash around your opponent and spam, Eureka, definitely, Ether Blade, there's more Ether Talents you could get for, like, more Ether and spamming and stuff like that, but I didn't get those, you could get... You know, you definitely need Exoskeleton. Exoskeleton is a must-have. Neuroplasticity is also a must-have, so that way you can have more monster slots and stuff like that. Fan the Flames, you just need. It's like the build in general. And, and stuff like that. Then, 
you're gonna want safety dance observation those are just like the talents you need for like dodging and moving around and stuff pressure claws pressure claws is honestly a must-have you get more pen on all your attacks warrior's respite you know run around heal light speed reflexes definitely is a must-have as well when you faint you get like auto parry so it's like really good for like running around fainting and stuff like that then bulldozer bulldozer is like a good talent to have shadow travel definitely so you can like get around the map if you're running you can just shadow travel up to some place where no one can get you and all the shadow talents you also need those for like your shadow moves like mega shadow gun stuff like that shade bringer then speed demon just for m1 chronostasis more m1 stuff scuba downer for health and if you're fighting in the water you for sure want to get impervious slumber on this build getting hit while knocked no longer resets your time knocked it's like really good for boss rating and stuff like that all right now we're gonna get into the mantras so if we have ash slam we just got a bloodless on that and since we only have 24 flame charm we can't really like level it up but we have astral wind now astral wind like it's really weird but astral wind is you like you definitely want to get this because when you inhale astral wind and you're burning service it makes it the biggest that's like I don't, I don't really know how to explain that but that's how it works then we have we have dawn walker for like protagonist syndrome the talents then we have blinding dawn as well blinding dawn is really good with the wind gem you hit like multiple people at once they don't really know how to parry it for some reason then we have the burning servants oh, i need to put a bloodless on that uh where is it at? oh i don't have a bloodless well yeah burning servants that's like what makes the build the build hits everybody bloodless is off that put two strats two vibrants then we have my big shadow gun three perfects three clouds three crystals three stratus and three vibrance i honestly think this is overkill but it works it does like a bar to people with like high hp then we have wind passage we just have three perfect lenses level five we have a wind gem on it you could you definitely could get flame leap with reversal spark but i didn't get that mantra i don't really know whether or not i'd pick that over wind passage though because it just sends you so far then we have Flame Wisp. Flame Wisp is so good. Flame Wisp will heal you like crazy. They nerfed it, but even then, like it'll heal you. That's what keeps you alive in the ganks. Then we have Gale Lunge just to catch up to people. Level 5, Bless Gems, to spam it. Then we have Shadebringer. Shadebringer, people do not know how to parry at all. You put a Multiplying Spark on it, Bloodless on it, level 5. That's what makes it really, really, really good. Then, let's show you how far my Wind Passage goes and like, how big my mantras are all right so my shadow gun i don't really have anyone to test this on but it goes about like this far that's really not bad that's decent distance then we have my wind passage it goes not bad you could definitely put like crystal lenses on it to make it go even further then my astral wind three cloud stones and three strategies to make the burning service huge and this is without near overload so if you go near overload it'll be even bigger then we have blinding dawn blinding dawn you can also replace it for other monsters i'm thinking like fire palm i might end up replacing that with fire palm or maybe like radiant kick just to catch up to people so when going a build like this you want to invest in like an ether kit or like a lot of tempo and stuff like that because these like moves they take like a lot of mon like uh ether this well i mean i put blue gems on most of my stuff but like Mega Shadow Gun, it takes up a decent amount of ether. If you don't have a blue gem on it, you're not gonna be able to use it if you put the same modifiers I did. Same thing for like Astral Wind. It's just because I have a lot of ether on this build, but if you don't, then you won't be able to use and spam as much as I can. Another thing for this build is Candied Fruit and like potions. It's just three wheat. Oh, so what Candied Fruit does is it increases your ether regen and your mantra damage. It's really, really good for boss rating and stuff. And I think it does apply to your Flame Wisp too. Like it'll heal you more. Then we have Delling Potion. It just gives you Ether. Liquid. Then you drink it. You'll get a ton of Ether back for like a minute. It's really good for spamming. You can spam all your monsters and you'll just get your Ether back. So this is like a must have on like almost all the boss rating. But most of y'all won't have to worry about this because if you go 40 intelligence, you'll probably have Nero by then. Neuroplasticity like decreases like the stuff you need, the mantra and stuff like that. You know what I mean. Alright, so as for my gear and stuff like that, we have a uh, Hero Blade of Shadow. 
You could definitely like put Hero Blade of Wind on this, but I kind of like the Shadow one because the drip and when you M1 faint, they're gonna roll, so you can just like use your critical afterwards. Then we have Prophet's Cloak for Crippling Darkness. That gives you 25% extra pen on all your monster attack attacks. Then you have 50 Ether Regen for that Ether Regen. It's really good. Iron Singer Heavy Plate. We have Drowned on this. 10% Physical Armor. That's really good. 31 HP. That's not bad. It's a pretty good Iron Singer Plate. Then we have just Easy Earrings. 2 Health. 16 Ether. And yeah, you definitely want to get some Ether on all your stuff because you want to spam as much as you can. Then we have this Red Royal Guard. We have Con Helmet with Ferocity. Ferocity, honestly, I don't know what it does, but it has something to do with Tempo. And this build will probably always have Tempo. It's like a boss raid build, so yeah. Then we have Star Boots with Displacement. I don't know what that does either, but it's also something with Ether and Tempo. 24 HP, 10 Ether, not bad. It's pretty decent. Then for the rings, we have Deep Fire Ring. This one, like if they're in Burning Servants, like the Pan the Flame, the Planetary Burning Servants, they're gonna be on fire and it'll burn faster. Then we have a Rosen's Ring just for like extra M1 damage, stuff like that. Even though we don't M1 much, but it gives 7 HP, so that's really good. Then we have Ring of Wisp. This, along with Candy Fruit, will make your Ring of Wisps very, very good. It'll heal you so much and it'll last for like so long, even with the nerf. Then what makes this build so good is the Ring of Casters. The Ring of Casters lets your mantras do 10% extra damage, but you don't get like your M1 damage do 10% less. Which honestly, since this build doesn't M1 very much, like it's just a win win because you don't M1 much and you spam mantras. So that works very well. Then lastly, we just have Confessor's Charm, 9 HP, 3 Physical Armor, 2 DVM. It's kind of funny because Shadow of Hero Blade is actually really underrated. Your running attacks will call, like, well, it'll proc Shadow. So meaning like Fear, Lasting Sorrow, all that kind of stuff will proc on it. Another thing is that a lot of y'all like, like my hair combo. Thank you. Um, my username is literally just my YouTube channel on Roblox or like... I don't know if y'all can see this if I like ed edit it out or not, but this is my use like username ID and stuff like that. And then lastly, I got a Reaper Bell. Honestly, I prefer Reaper over like Gravity Bell and stuff like that because when you knock somebody in a gank, you want to like just instantly grip them. It's also fun to see their reaction in VC as they like die. Gravity Bell, honestly, it could work. It definitely could work. Like you can Gravity Bell, trap them, then just burn them with burning servants. But I feel like people will like rush and save them. So I feel like this Reaper Bell is just better in the end. Honestly, this build is like really fun for boss raiding. This is probably like the most fun I've had on Deep Oaking when I played on this build. And I already know if other people make this build, it's gonna be like really brain dead. Y'all are make y'all are gonna make the build like better than mine. So like I hope y'all have fun on this build. And thank you for watching. See ya.